Today we'll be running some numbers to see how likely we are to make our charges from reserve and also talking about some general strategies and tactics you can use when you're making these moves. Hello and welcome back to Auspex Tactics, the strategy and tactics focused 40k channel, where today we're doing another quick tip general strategy video. There are loads of units in 40k that like to come down from reserve and then charge straight into your opponent, from Gene Stealer Cult Aberrants, Blood Angels Death Company, Eversaw Assassins, Deep Striking Demons, and a whole host of other options. This is really quite a common scenario to be happening through 8th edition. So today we're going to look at the likelihood of making those charges, and the other things to consider around the whole manoeuvre. So let's look at the numbers first then. So here we have the likelihood of making charges from reserve for a bunch of common situations that will cover the vast majority of the common scenarios in 40k. On the top left we have our standard 9 inch charge, say you have a unit of Space Marine Terminators that deep strike down, they have no special rules or other upgrades that will help them on the charge, they have a 28% chance of making that 9 inch charge. So that's really not really all that good odds, most of the time that unit's going to have to stand around, not getting into close combat, potentially getting shot next turn, or maybe your opponent's charging units just moving away from them. So that's not ideal really. You can of course boost this with a command point reroll, which actually makes a really big difference, particularly on the 9 inch charge, if you're willing to reroll the lowest of whichever 2 dice you roll, obviously not bothering if you roll a 1 and a 2 or something like that, then you actually have a 52% chance of making the charge, so above half. Interestingly, having just one reroll dice is actually more powerful than having a full reroll of the charge roll, because odds are you're going to have a dice roll that is 4 or more, and being able to keep that boost your chances significantly when you make that reroll. Common things to let you have a full reroll to charge include things like Black Templars who have that ability innately. Sometimes you have the choice of either options, such as the Orcs or the Black Templars, being able to reroll one or both of the dice, or even if you just got the standard full reroll of charge, you can use a command reroll instead of that, say if you roll a 6 on one of your dice. That makes it a lot more reliable with a 57% chance to get in. Still not great, but not bad at all in my opinion. Incidentally, if you use the White Scars 3d6 and pick the two highest stratagem, it'll be the same as the command reroll from this section, so a 52% chance, because rolling 3d6 and picking the two highest is equivalent to rolling 2d6 and rerolling the lowest. So if your White Scars smash captains, assuming they have no other benefits to add to their charge, they'll have a 52% chance of getting in if you pop that stratagem. Next up on the left, we have an 8 inch charge which is what you get if you have a plus 1 inch bonus to your charge. Common ones include Blood Angels, Orcs Evil Sons, or the Hungry for Battle successor traits from Codex Space Marines. This gives you a much better chance off the bat with 42%, and it only gets better from there with the various rerolls that you can access. If you have any rerolls at all, then you're going to have at least a 2 third chance of getting in, which is great. This is particularly good news for Blood Angels units, so even if you have an unsupported unit of Death Company dropping down, provided you have a command reroll to spare, they are more likely than not that they are going to get in. Next we have a 7 inch charge, so this will happen when you have a plus 2 to your charge rolls, such as if you deep strike into the aura of a chaplain that's giving you plus 2 to your charge rolls. Obviously he has to start on the board himself to be able to cast his litanies at the start of the battle round. This will give you a 58% chance of getting in even with no additions, and if you supplement that with a command reroll, then you're going to get in 80% of the time. This time it's better to take the full reroll than the command reroll if you have the choice, and if you have the choice of either, like the Black Templars do, then 85% is very reliable indeed. Now there are some units in the game that have the option to have a 3d6 inch charge, in particular things that I can think of include the Blood Angels Descent of Angels stratagem, and the Eversaw Assassins coming in from reserve, and there are plenty of others. For a 9 inch charge, it's a 74% chance, and if you re-roll that, it will go up to 93%, not 83% as I've written here I'm afraid. It's definitely 93% if you have a full re-roll. Somewhere you might see that is the Blood Angels Angels Wing Relic, which allows a full re-roll of the charge, plus Descent of the Angels can get you the 3d6 part. Blood Angels also get plus 1 to their charge, so I've also included the numbers for an 8 inch charge on 3d6 inch here, which frankly are ridiculously reliable. I've still failed a couple of those even with the reroll though, so bear in mind that nothing is ever guaranteed. So hopefully those numbers can give you a little bit of help making the decisions and weighing up the risks about how much you want to commit onto your deep strike and charge strategy. 
They might be helpful for deciding exactly what buffs you want to buy for a unit and how much it's worth investing to give them every chance of getting into their intended target. Now let's move on to look at some tactics when you're dropping down to make this charge. Firstly, you need to decide what turn you're going to deep strike on. Typically this will be turn 2 or turn 3 in most match play games, though some armies have different options such as space marines with drop pods, or armies that allow you to do a sort of teleport manoeuvre turn 1, such as orcs with da jump. Generally it's going to be better to make your presence felt as early as possible, but other factors might dissuade you, like having too much enemy chaff units around blocking you out from key charges, or maybe wanting to wait until you get into the assault doctrine for space marines, which will happen turn 3. Choosing your drop site is one of the most important considerations. Obviously the main purpose is going to be able to get within 9 inches of the target that you most want dead from your assaulting unit, but if you do have flexibility of a few locations then there are some things you can consider. Firstly, obviously dropping in cover is better than not dropping in cover. If they fail their charge then they'll have a little bit more protection, and if they succeed their charge it might provide a little bit of protection against overwatch. You can take this to even more extremes by dropping out of line of sight, say an infantry unit dropping down behind a ruined wall, so there's no opportunity for the enemy to overwatch them, though obviously you'll have to bear in mind whether you want to shoot any of your own weapons when you drop down, which might mean you need to consider about good lines of sight for yourself to make sure you can get the most out of your firepower. There are plenty of intercept abilities in the game at the moment, the most common probably being Space Marines or Spec Scan, where if you turn up within 12 inches of a Space Marine unit, for 2 command points they can shoot you with a minus 1 to hit penalty. It means that setting up out of line of sight might be very useful, you might be able to outrange some of the models in the squad, or you just might want to make sure that you're not within 12 inches of certain units with very heavy firepower that is just going to shred your deep strikers. There are some other similar abilities, Eldar have a stratagem to shoot a unit at your incoming reserves, and that unit just needs to be next to a Farseer, so generally the main thing that you can do is line of sight blocking there, and there are other units that you can be aware of such as Inquisitor Kotiaz's ability, and Tau early warning overrides if they've taken them, just make sure that you're not going to have your deep strike unit shot down for no gain at all. Ideally, if all other things are equal, you'd want to be dropping so you have multiple targets that are all within 9 inch range. This means if for whatever reason some of your targets die and your opponent starts to pull models that are near your deep strikers, you'll have at least one charge that's going to be within 9 inch range, because if you start going up to a 10 inch or worse charge, it's going to make things a lot less likely. If you want to be able to affect other units and to be able to declare a charge on them, it's important that those units are just within 12 inch range. A lot of models have boosted charge abilities, such as that 3d6 inch charge that we mentioned earlier, but it's not any good to you even if you can reach the model if you couldn't declare a charge on it at the start of the phase because it was greater than 12 inches away. It might mean that you might be able to reach it, but you might not actually be allowed to swing it into in close combat because you didn't declare it as the target of your charge, so anything that you want to damage has to be within 12 inches. Another thing that's an option is to deep strike into character auras, deep strike with characters, or if you're deep striking some characters, then they might be able to lend some support to the other units, either in earlier phases or in the charge and fight phase. So obviously this is one more thing that you can try and gain when you position in some deep strikers, and you can potentially chain a model or two back to a character aura if you have a big squad that can be both within 9 inches of your target and also have a fair bit of board control. When it comes to declaring targets, unless there's any overwatch coming in, you may as well just declare absolutely everything to give you the maximum options when you come to make your charge move. If you don't declare things as charges, you can't go within 1 inches of them during the charge move, which might hamper your mobility quite a lot, including your ability to actually reach some targets that you've actually declared a charge on. So unless the overwatch is going to do significant damage to you, then just declare it all. If your main aim is to say kill a unit and then pile on into others, but you're not interested in damaging those units this turn, then you may as well not declare them to save yourself the overwatch for those. A common example might be I might use a big squad of death company to drop down, declare a charge on an infantry unit, pulverise the infantry unit, and then be in good position to consolidate into a bunch of tanks that were sheltering behind said infantry unit. If the primary aim this turn is to lock them up, then there's no reason to take the extra overwatch. When it comes to actually making your charge, you might have fancy stratagems or abilities to boost the charge, and you can weigh up the extra risk of making the charge or failing it based on the numbers that we've already talked about. I'll post the slides with the charge numbers onto the All Specs Tactics Facebook group if you do want to get yourself a copy of the image. Hopefully you make the charge as a success, and then you'll be moving your models into close combat. 
Again, one of the main aims is usually going to be to get as many into close combat as possible to maximise your damage output on the intended targets, but there can be some other considerations as well, particularly if they're all going to be in combat either way. You can think about chaining a model or two back to character auras, if the character aura is going to have better effect than having the extra model in close combat. You should consider the end position of the unit, say if you think you're going to wipe out the squad, then where would be best to consolidate into? Could you make sure that you're out of line of sight, in cover, or able to consolidate into other gunline units and tie them up? In particular, you can also look for chances to consolidate into another enemy infantry unit, try point them with your models, and effectively wrap and trap them so the enemy can't fall back and your unit won't be able to be shot next turn. I did do an entire video on that quite recently, so feel free to check that one out after this, as wrapping and trapping units to pin them in close combat is a really powerful tactic in Warhammer 40k. From there on, you're basically in close combat, which is a bit of another subject all of itself, so I think that we'll leave it there for now. If there's anything that I missed that can be important when you're charging from reserve, please let me know. I think that having a reasonable grasp of the numbers is incredibly helpful though, because you want to know exactly what your chances are when you take these risks. Thank you for listening to another Auspex Tactics video. Feel free to subscribe if you'd like to hear more, and let me know if there are any other core gameplay tactics that you'd like me to go over. I'm always looking for more ideas for these quick tip type videos, as they take a little bit more thought than your standard unit review. Feel free to support me on the Auspex Tactics Patreon page if you're finding these videos useful. And don't forget, I'll post the numbers for the chance of succeeding the charges on the Auspex Tactics Facebook page if it will be of any use to you. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you guys in the next video.